Yeah. Yeah. Is your talk on here? Yeah. So our next speaker is uh, Dr. Vinod Ikra, who is from the uh, Hindu Rail Hospital in India, and he is a fellow of the Royal Society of Medicine, and he's going to be talking about the failed inhale incident. Thank you. Uh, my talk is a bit different from research papers and other studies. It, uh, it deals with the lessons from the failed inhaled insulin. Inhaled insulin they came in US market in 2006, approved by FDA. They were sold, promoted by Pfizer, and later withdrawn by the Pfizer because of poor acceptability and poor sales. So we will discuss about why it was withdrawn and what was the benefits and what was the uh, disadvantages. See, this is not just the number of people who died in birth. 2000, it was 171 million, and by 2030, it will be more than double. And these are the different figures in around the world, in USA. And these figures, I am just putting here because uh, these figures, they tell you that there is an increased demand of insulin and there is a need for giving insulin through better roads apart from injectable road. So, insulin is the most effective treatment for diabetes, but about 67 percent of diabetes patients, they are not achieving target glycemic control. Usually, it is initiated late, lot of factors are there, patient factors and physician's factors are there, both of them, they are reluctant to start on insulin. This situation is there not only in USA, but around the world. And thus, intensive insulin therapy is underutilized in both type 1 and type 2 diabetic patients. Achieving optimal blood glucose control implies avoidance of extreme high and low and maintaining blood glucose towards a normal thing. This is hard to be an optimal level. This Achieving optimum level will delay or prevent microvascular and macrovascular complications. And thus, early insulin treatment and intensive insulin administration is a need of our to prevent different diabetic, diabetes related complications. As I told you, thus there is a rising need of starting and maintaining on insulin and the need of developing better routes of insulin administration. These are the two routes. These are practical and potential routes so far tried and well known. One is injectable, another is inhaled insulin. This is Pfizer insulin inhaler. So this is the tail of two insulins. One is uh, painless and easy to administer, easy to administer treatment, and another is subcutaneous one. This uh, this uh, highlights two daily painful experiences: filling the syringe, measuring it, and injecting oneself or once a day one. So, what could be the good things about inhaled insulin? Uh, lungs, they have got a large surface area. Their avoidance of first pass metabolism like subcutaneous insulin. 
and there is absence of degrading gastric acid and degrading GI enzymes if we go for all route. There are some bite points like chronic lung disease, patient may not be able to absorb the required dose. And some metabolites do occur in lungs and there could be mucociliary clearance. So, to begin with, what were the indications of inhaled insulin and their usage? This could be used for type 1 and type 2 diabetes as combination therapy with intermediate longish acting subcutaneous insulin or OHA, or this could be used as monotherapy. There were different issues like Inhaled insulin, this was easy to carry, painless and easy to intake and thus because there was no need of injecting so there was no hindrance of multiple dosage. This was short and rapid acting. A specified treatment uh, temperature was not essential to store and uh, this was a rather doubtful study reported a positive impact on Alzheimer's disease. But there were some concerns like special groups were excluded like pregnant ladies and smokers and ex-smokers. There was fear of reduction of lung capacity and there was fear of lung malignancy in case of long term use. The minor side effect was mild to moderate cough and there was insignificant effect on lung function and lung parameters. The applicability for ex-smokers and smokers and for children and pregnant ladies as I mentioned was there. Then there was a fear of insulin antibody formation. And long term safety was not established with inhaled insulin. So, once when we opt for inhaled insulin, how should the inhaled insulin development programs go on? Inhaled insulin should be as effective as subcutaneous insulin in controlling postprandial hyperglycemia. This should add in achieving long-term glycemic control. So be easy to administer and acceptable to the patients and their physicians too. There should be good safety indicators, well tolerated and hypoglycemic effect should be less than or comparable to subcutaneous injected insulin should be low for insulin antibody generation and there should be negligible or non progressive effect which could be reversible on F1, DLCO and lung tissue in general. The device, I am putting the device because uh, one of the reason for failure of Pfizer insulin was the device was cumbersome. So the device should be handy and discreet to use. It should be able to deliver a desired dose in a simple way. Should be easy to clean and maintain and of course it should be not more expensive than subcutaneous insulin. And when we compare to injectable insulin Uh, inhaled insulin can be used to for parental medication to treat postparental hyperglycemia. It is it passed to supplement the basal insulin or OHK at the meal time and it was to be avoided in smokers and with those with history of smoking. This was just a care so that the side effect on lungs and 
malignancy here was mitigated. And of course, because long term strategies were not there, so it was to be avoided pregnancy, extremes of age, and chronic lung disease patients. See, these were the different uh, insulin delivery systems which were in play before the extravera delica. Of course, extravera was there, then the other including the mankind which is already in the development and it seems that it may come one day. So how did the inhaled insulin fail? Why did the actuvera was not acceptable to the patients and physicians in general and it had to be recalled? See the concept of using lungs as route for insulin delivery, it came during 1920s, just after the discovery of insulin. It took eight decades for the concept to become technically feasible. And when it became feasible, Pfizer, Aventis, Ilililai, Mankind, Derogen, other com pharma companies that tried to develop it and insulin. Pfizer was First to come, they came with Exovera. This was approved by FDA in Jane 2006. We came available by September 2006. Then Pfizer pulled off Exovera in October 2007 because of poor sales exclusivity. So the idea which was nurtured for nearly a century was blown off. This was a big setback. So I will go through from the beginning in 1922, you know this, this photo very well went in by they discovered insulin and they are seen here with the, one of the dog, they made a study on. Then this was observation by Guyton in 91 that almost overnight overlooked for a diabetic patient changed from one of the rapid decline to death to nearly normal person because of invention of insulin, advent of insulin. Then in 1922, a German, scien German scientist, Genselin, he experimented to deliver insulin by inhalation. Further in late 20s, weekly at all, they, they were able to prove that hypoglycemic factor in insulin diabetes was there. But these researches they were limited due to poor bioavailability and lack of effective inhalation devices. But anyway, the idea of inhaled insulin was wrong. Then came 1990s when Carl Leopold developed a method to measure peptides like insulin in a, in a glassy state. This allowed pulverization of insulin in a powder form to make uh, inhaled insulin possible. Later research led to technologies to turn insulin into particles suitable for inhalation. The inhalation devices to deliver insulin to lung and to life, then came, then instead of blood stream by passing liver were made. Then NECTA developed technology in Peking Bay to begin testing and formulating inhaled insulin. And during late 1990s, human test began, and then you know by January 2006, FDA approved Pfizer's exuberance. 